Thanks for tuning in to DCTV here at Davis Media Access. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and this is The City Considers. This is a new program we've started that will help us address citywide issues and upcoming city council business. Today happens to be our first episode, and I'm really pleased to have with us our mayor, Rob Davis. Welcome, Rob. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. Glad you're here. We chose to, so we could have chosen a lot of different topics, and mm -hmm. we chose to start with something that's very topical and very relevant here in town, and that's our status as a sanctuary city. Right. I know this is work you've been uh, spending a lot of time on, so yeah. let's start with what does it mean to be a sanctuary city? Yeah, well, for us, um, I mean, there's a history to it which stretches back long before I was even in the city, uh, which is really at a time in our nation's history when there were significant numbers of people coming from Central American war situations who were being given uh, refuge in a variety of communities. Um, I think over time it's evolved much more into uh, a statement actually about how we want to uh, police our city. Mm -hmm. um, so in 2014 we reaffirmed our commitment uh, as a sanctuary city and we did so at a time when there was a lot of discussion nationally as there is now about um, immigration, undocumented immigration and um, what it means uh, for us to have a significant number of undocumented immigrants in our community who provide many, many essential services in the ag and restaurant and uh, service industry. Sure. So essentially, it's our statement to the community saying that in any interactions with, with police or law enforcement in the city, um, any interaction, whether it's someone being stopped for a broken taillight or whether it's someone approaching the police for assistance, right. um, that in no situation will our police department request information on their on their status, mm -hmm. their immigration status, and the the intent there is to signal that um, that is not a concern of ours. It's uh, something that uh, is the purview of the federal government, not local government. But most importantly, uh, we want to say to people: you do not have to be afraid of our police. You do not have to be afraid that somehow if you contact the police, they're right. going to be asking you questions which could lead you to, uh, to problems later on. And we think that makes us a safer city. Mm -hmm. um, we think it makes us uh, a city where uh, you know, citizens um, can feel, our citizens, people who live here, who right. are part of our community, can feel confident that their interactions with the police will be safe ones. And of course, we're trying to approach um, you know, interactions with the police on a variety of levels. This is just one area where we're trying to send a clear signal that we want you to feel safe and confident in using services offered by the community. Right. What's changed since January 25th and the, the, the so-called travel ban? Well, the travel ban is a little bit different than, than, than Sanctuary City because the travel ban really affects uh, people who are, who are coming into the country um, with, with documentation. The travel ban was about saying, look, citizens from these seven countries right. um, are not, at that point, are not permitted to enter the country. And those, the people that are most affected by that, quite frankly, are people in our community or people who are coming to the university or coming to visit family and friends at the university under normal document right. status. So our sanctuary city status doesn't really um, refer uh, or doesn't really have reference to that particular, mm -hmm. that, that's introduced a whole host of other challenges. Right. And I've been able to reach out to John Garamendi and um, uh, our, our local representative to inform him as to the impact of, of, of that decision. And of course, we're, we were thankful for uh, what, the, uh, what, the local, what the courts here uh, in the, on the West Coast have done to put a hold on that. Yes. But that is not uh, any action, that action was not particularly um, influencing our sanctuary city status. What right. has, the other, I mean, the other thing that's really changed is, is Donald Trump's statements during his campaign and subsequent statements about his intent to remove federal funding from sanctuary, city status, uh, sanctuary right. cities. And that's where a little bit more light has been shown on the concept um, and has caused some anxiety. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for us, there's a couple things there. Number one, he hasn't defined legally what sanctuary status is. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, um, uh, we are not, there is, no, there is no law that compels our local police force to collaborate with ICE uh, or the Department of Homeland Security on immigration actions. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is none. Further, 
Um, if ICE requests uh, any hold on a person, so someone gets detained and they request a detainer, that is not a legal document. It, doesn't, okay. it does not require any jurisdiction to hold that person. In fact, uh, the Constitution, uh, in, the, in the form of the Fourth Amendment, does not allow you to hold someone without a probable cause, without, without a charge. Right. And so, personally, and, and some of those things don't apply to us as a city, and we can get into that, but personally, I, I think what Donald Trump is trying to do is he's, he's bullying cities. He's mm -hmm. trying to, he's trying to, he's making a political statement uh, that has no basis in the law. And, and recent Supreme Court cases have made it clear that the federal government cannot remove funding from a jurisdiction uh, for a decision they make. Uh, they can't remove funding outside of the narrow binds of whatever that issue might right. be. So if the federal government's providing funding for police uh, equipment in a city and the police say, well, our police are not going to participate, they may be able to withhold funding there, but not, not road money, that, right. which has no nexus right. with that. So my personal opinion, I think the opinion of our city attorney and our t police chief is that, um, and I'll only speak for myself, but my sense is they would agree with me, is that this is, this is political posturing. Mm -hmm. um, this has nothing to do with um, us not complying with, with uh, relevant state, federal laws, and the Constitution of the United States. Right. And so we reject categorically the notion that somehow the federal government com can come in and, and do harm to us on the basis of that proclamation. This is where it gets confusing for people, because I've even heard questions out in the community, are we breaking the law? No. How does this put the city at risk? It does not put the city at right. risk. Right, and so I'm hearing. So my earlier question, I, a slight rephrase, was sort of the whole Trump administration policy on, on, on immigration right now, and you, you've addressed that. Yeah. What are you hearing from people? in the community? What are, what are the concerns that people are bringing to you as the mayor? Well, I mean, so there are some people that are saying, why are we maintaining sanctuary status? I mean, why would we do that? Why would we put ourselves at risk? And our clear commitment and our clear statement is, as I've already noted, we are within the law. Mm -hmm. We are within the Constitution of the United States. Second, we are doing this because we are responsible for the safety of our community. Right. Now, let's be clear. Um, if someone is the victim of a crime in our community, mm -hmm. do we want them to withhold information about that crime because of their fear of the police of being detained? No, because then we give in to the posturing and the bullying. Exactly. Yeah. We, we want a safe community where everybody feels secure if they're the victim of a crime right. to come forward and receive help that they need in dealing with that. If we create a situation where our population is fearful of approaching our police, mm -hmm. then arguably we're creating a less safe community. And the reasons why cities that are sanctuary cities across the nation have stood up, and in the case of San Francisco, have even sued uh, the Trump administration mm -hmm. on this point, is because they understand that a decision which is politically based, which has no basis in security and safety, right. um, will have detrimental effects on our safety. And by the way, a lot of people will ask me, and you ask what people approach me about, yeah. but what about the case in San Francisco? The, because the San Francisco um, Sheriff's Department did not cooperate with the federal government, a person was uh, let out of jail and committed a murder. Okay, that's a false narrative. First of all, a detainer was placed on that person, mm -hmm. which is a non-binding, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. it's a non-binding action, it's a voluntary action, they did not offer information to the San Francisco police that this person was actually uh, being sought for felony, uh, for, for, uh, 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 for reasons of a crime committed as a felon. They did not provide a warrant. They did not provide probable cause. They did not provide information. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the San Francisco um, sheriff was not under any obligation to hold that person. In fact, arguably would have been um, going against the Constitution to hold that person without cause. Well, that's been turned into the narrative that, that the San Francisco Sheriff's Department was not cooperating with the federal government. That's a false narrative. Mm -hmm. In our county, um, though we don't control uh, what our sheriff does here locally, meaning in the city, yes. when we, if we detain someone, they are taken to the county jail, mm -hmm. and they do be, come under the jurisdiction of the sheriff. Our sheriff um, just has made it clear that he is not going to hold people on detainer. If, a, if a, um, a duly executed warrant by a grand jury or by a judge is presented, you know, providing probable cause for holding someone 
any jurisdiction in the country, mm -hmm. any jurisdiction who's holding someone and receives a, a duly executed warrant of that type will turn that person over to whatever jurisdiction is, is, is requesting, whether it's the federal government or another jurisdiction within the state or beyond the state. Right. So there is no issue of non-cooperation here. There's a very narrow issue of voluntarily holding people for, with, you know, with, without cause, in many cases, on a, an immigration detainer. And that's where there is no requirement for participation. Uh, it turns out cities and jurisdictions can um, voluntarily uh, uh, work with the federal government. Uh, there's a there's a program within the law that allows that. Our county, our city. I don't know if any in the state have voluntary mm -hmm. voluntarily entered into an agreement with the government to basically allow local police to act as in, as, as immigration enforcement. Right. But we're not going to do that um, because it's antithetical to the safety concerns that we mm -hmm. have. So on the one side of people being fearful about you know the federal government imposing something on us, that's. That's our response. Right. Uh, we're, we're acting within the bounds of the law. This is a statement from our attorney. This is a statement from our chief of police. Mm -hmm. This is not Rob, the politician, stating this. We are on solid <laughs> legal ground, um, and we're confident that our our local jurisdictions, <clears throat> excuse me, the sheriff's department will also not be holding people on detainer. Mm -hmm. As I said, warrants. That's a different situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now let me address concerns on the other side. I think one of the things that I think we, we need to understand is there, there are lots of rumors now. Um, not a, I won't say every day, but nearly every week, at least every week, I'm hearing people calling me, texting me, uh, Facebook messaging, whatever, saying, I understand there's DHS, Department of Homeland Security, activity here. What's going on? Or I heard this person was arrested. Right. We have the possibility to, you know, a lot of times we're, we're not aware, we're not uh, informed ahead of time. Uh, on act actions that are taking place. But I think it's important, and, and up till now, all of them have been proven to be just that, rumors. Mm -hmm. But we have to be clear that the Department of Homeland Security encompasses a number of offices that have a number of functions. And for example, it's come to my attention recently, and I know other people in the community are aware of it, that we have significant challenges in this region with human trafficking. Yes. Um, there is sex trafficking and there's uh, slave labor that occur in our region. Uh, even within, uh, there have been some cases even uh, closer to home than the region yes. in our county. And uh, it, to the extent that these uh, rings, and they're mobile, so we're not talking about you know, uh, trafficking that's situated in locales. It's moving. Yes. It's moving. People are being moved around and it's constantly. And it's a real problem. In it's a huge area. problem. We're learning about it through our hospital right. system, who's making it, uh, unfortunately, really clear that they're seeing people show up in their emergency rooms who are, who are severely... Uh, impaired and, and, it, and they're the victims of, of one form or another of this trafficking. We know it's there and we also know that we're thankful for arms of the federal government, Department of Homeland Security, who are doing, and the FBI, who are doing investigations into this. And so there may be, uh, there was another example recently of, uh, I got a text saying there's, there's, there's Homeland Security activity going on in West Sacramento. Yeah. Well, there was a woman who drove onto the bridge, the Tower Bridge, and said she had an explosive device and was going to blow up the bridge. It turns out when a piece of infrastructure like that is threatened, the federal government, Homeland Security, immediately comes in. It turns sure. out in that case she had <clears throat> excuse me, some um, you know, mental challenges and mm -hmm. was taken care of, and there was actually no bomb. But it did lead to an action which caused great fear right. in the community. What we can commit to in the community is informing people about um, what we know Right. What's happening? Excuse me. <coughs> what's happening, and um, you know uh, what the outcome is. And up until now, uh, we don't have evidence um, that ICE is active in the, the, the region or in the county, uh, detaining people on immigration status right. issues. We're actually almost at the end of our time. Believe it or not, right. it flew by. It's such a dense topic. Um, you know, we can come back and revisit it as things continue to develop. But if people Best way to get information, best way to interact with the council? You know, I just encourage people to, to send me an email. Okay. Uh, rdavis at cityofdavis.org. Um, right. I'm easy to find on Facebook. I'm interacting with people more and more through that media. I'm happy to find out what I can. I think our police, our, our police chief, Darren Pytel, is extremely responsive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be meeting with him again very soon to put a finer point on some issues that I would like clarification on. 
But if people want to just contact me directly, I, I think Great. other council members, rdavis at cityofdavis.org, right. we're happy to talk to people about their concerns and do what we can to answer their questions. Great. Thanks so much for coming in today, Rob, and helping us in, you know, do the inaugural episode of yeah. this series. Yeah, you're All right. Thanks for having me. You've been watching The City Considers here on DCTV at Davis Media Access. Find us online at dctv.davismedia.org. Thanks.